in uh, one of the other modules on uh, freezing time, uh, we observed that Planck's equation has uh, several deficiencies in determining freezing time. Uh, some of these deficiencies are uh, overcome in a method that was developed by Professor Pham in 2001. Uh, this procedure is more realistic than uh, Planck's equation in accommodating conditions that are encountered during the freezing process. Specifically, uh, Pham's method accounts for the sensible heat removal during the pre-freezing and post-freezing periods. Also, this method allows us to consider some of the irregular shapes. The uh, improved accuracy of this method has been uh, documented in uh, several other scientific studies. So first we will look at the assumptions that are made in this method. The freezing air temperature is uniform and constant. The initial temperature of the slab is uniform and constant. The final temperature required at the end of the freezing process is defined and at the surface of the object there is a convective mode of heat transfer. So just looking at these assumptions you will note that this method accounts for both sensible heat removal during the pre-freezing period as well as in the post-freezing period. So before we begin with the mathematical development, we will draw this temperature time profile somewhere inside the food sample. And we have temperature versus heat removal. So we have a drop in temperature, a little kink to show supercooling, and then the curve. We will identify a point on this curve and also express another point which will represent the end of freezing. So let's label this curve. We have the initial temperature Ti and then this point we selected on the curve we call it Tfm which is the mean freezing temperature that is dividing this uh, temperature plot into two sections and then the final temperature of the product at the end of freezing as Tc. Now the two parts of this curve are expressed as delta H1 that is the volumetric enthalpy change in uh, kilojoules per cubic meter. Uh, that's the first part delta H1 and then delta H2 and the second section representing mostly the latent heat removal during the post freezing period as delta H2. Again Tfm is the mean freezing temperature Ti is the initial temperature, Tc is the final temperature of the frozen food. Delta H1 is the volumetric enthalpy change from Ti to Tfm and it is kilojoules per cubic meters. And for the second section representing mostly the latent heat removal and the post freezing period from Tfm to Tc, the volumetric enthalpy is delta H2, again kilojoules per cubic meters. So from the data collected from a large number of freezing experiments involving high moisture biological materials, Pham obtained this empirical equation for Tfm. Tfm equals 1.8 plus 0 0.263 Tc plus 0 0.105 times Ta. And for these sections on the graph, delta H1 equals rho U times CPU times Ti minus Tfm and delta H2 equals rho F times LF plus CF times Tfm minus Tc. Delta T1 equals Ti plus Tfm divided by 2 minus Ta and delta T2 equals Tfm minus Ta. Note that rho u is the density of unfrozen material, CPU is the specific heat of unfrozen material 
rho f is the density of frozen material and cpf is the specific heat of frozen material the equation then is as follows t equals dc divided by efh in parentheses delta h1 over delta t1 plus delta h2 over delta t2 times in parentheses 1 plus Byatt number divided by 2. In this equation dc is the characteristic dimension of the object being frozen. It is half thickness for a slab, radius for a cylinder and radius for a sphere. Uh, of course the uh, heat transfer coefficient is expressed as h which is watts per square meter degree Celsius. Now EF represents a shape factor. EF equals 1 for an infinite slab. EF equals 2 for an infinite cylinder. And EF equals 3 for a sphere. For complicated shapes, EF must be separately determined as we will see in a separate module. Uh, again, note that Byatt number is HDC over K as we saw in one of the previous uh, modules on convective heat transfer.